Hello, welcome back. Today I'm painting Serena from Reaper Bones. Let's jump straight in. Let's get on with the base coat. For the cloak, I'm using Vallejo Game Colors Dark Green. It's a base layer consistency, so it's thinned down a little bit and it's going on nice and smooth. I may do a couple of coats depending on how it turns out. And moving on to Vallejo Game Colors Leather Brown. This I'm going to be using on the leg area. They are wearing some very tight leggings or tights or trousers or whatever it may be. So they don't get in the way while they're sneaking about and climbing up buildings. Uh, some Rhinox hide for the boots. I'll also be using this on the sash, just to have a nice contrast between everything else. Some Vallejo Game Colors Bloody Red for the bodice and the gloves. I like to think that with wearing red, especially with the gloves, it hides any blood stains that may occur in any missions that she takes on. Some Vallejo Game Colors Stonewall Grey. I'm using this for the sleeves. Scale 75 Gobi Brown. This is what I'll be using on any of the little accessories and extras. So the kind of the coin pouches and there's a little bag on the other side and the sash and things. Some Bugman's Glow for the skin. I won't be putting any washes or anything down here. So it's a fairly dark start and then we can highlight up from there. My goal with this miniature is to have something pretty high contrast, higher contrast than I normally do. I feel like everything I've painted recently has been kind of fun, uh, but maybe a little bit flat. At least I've seen a lot of high contrast miniatures recently, and that's something I want to go for, uh, but to my own style, I guess. I had been working away from using washes and starting dark and highlighting up, but for this miniature I'm going to go with multiple layers of a very light wash, so it's going to be very watered down, and I'll do, like I say, a few layers kind of toning in the shadows, and then we'll highlight back up using the base colours that we just used. So in the end I did, I think, about three coats of wash, um, getting into more and more of the darker areas, the recesses, the bits underneath, where I really wanted to push the shadows. This has left a kind of dirty and glossy finish like washes are known for. I'm hoping that the gloss I can take out with some matte varnish later on, and then the dirtiness, if I can highlight up neatly, it should take a lot of that away as well. 
For highlighting, it actually makes the colour choices a lot, lot easier when you do use a wash. Everything has been darkened down by the washes, so now we can highlight up with the base colours that we mentioned previously. My highlight technique here is what I've been using recently, and that I guess is layering or glazing on colours, going into smaller and smaller areas. Just like I always say, try and consider the big shapes first when you do start highlighting, so you don't get bogged down into the detail straight away. Make sure you're pointing out like the legs of cylinders and highlight that shape, and then look at any creases and knees and folds in the clothes and that sort of thing afterwards. Because I want this high contrast look, I've left most of the shadows in place and I've highlighted a smaller area from the start than I normally would, so we'll have a bigger range, we'll have a big chunk of shadow before we get to any kind of base colours and highlight colours. For the kind of sash thing at the front, I wanted this to not look the same as everything else that's kind of brown around it. So I'm highlighting this up, but with texture. So I'm doing kind of scratched lines across it rather than painting a smooth, lighter color. The scratches that I put in were significantly brighter than the base color. So I'm putting a filter over here just to blend everything to get it in and get it all one tone. So for highlighting the bodice, I am completely ignoring the underside of this. I want this to be just in complete shadow, again for this high contrast look. And I'm going straight in, unlike what I normally say, to just highlighting the kind of folds. There's a lot of defined folds in the gloves and this bit of clothing. So I am not considering the overall shape. I am looking straight into the folds and trying to do it in smaller details than I normally would Now at this stage, I'm already actually really happy with it. I really like how the sleeves look. Uh, I like the details that we've got, especially along the legs for some reason. This kind of style or higher contrast, I really like it. Okay, starting to lose track of what's done and what isn't done. Uh, when it doesn't look quite right to my eyes, this is the point where I remember the base. So just doing that black and I'm painting the rock kind of a natural brownie rock kind of look. For highlighting the cloak, again, I'm considering the bigger shapes. I think this is the point looking back where I've let down the miniature. I don't really know why, but it just it doesn't look right. There's this weird kind of, you'll see in the end, but there's this weird shadow in the middle of it. It's highlighted just at the top and just at the bottom. I think I maybe considered the overall shape a bit too strongly in this particular situation. Although it is an odd shape, it kind of over or folds across at the top, so that would be highlighted, then it curves underneath itself, and then it falls flat at the bottom. So it kind of where the highlights are, I guess it's a combination of my lack of skill with painting and perhaps my 
understanding of light and how that works in terms of where the lights and the shadows should fall on this type of material. Once I get to the point highlighting the cloak where I'm considering the details, I start kind of stippling and scratching on the details. So I'm going for this kind of woven material, uh, like it's a wool cloak or something like that, rather than something smooth and silky. This is something a bit more hard wearing for running around in the streets. For the brightest part on the cloak, I added some yellow just to get a bit of color contrast as well as the brightness contrast. And you're starting to see it now. Uh, where I'm adding the highlights, it kind of looks okay, but there's just this odd patch of darkness in the middle. I think I was still, I'm still going for obviously this higher contrast finish, and I think this is where I need to do a bit more consideration and work. But this front view where we've got the boots and the legs and everything else, I really like the sleeves. I think I think is working really well, actually. As for the weapons, I don't think I'm at the point, although I probably will try it soon to do some non-metallic metals. I figure a rogue probably wants some fancy daggers. Maybe they only come out on special missions or not many people see them. And so something kind of show off. We're going for golden handles and then this nice shiny blade. We're not going to wash down, we're not going to add scratches or anything, these are going to be very pristine looking. And here we go, this is the end result. I really like it. I definitely took my time over the small areas when highlighting, like on the sleeves or the different folds and things like that. And that's really come across when I look at this miniature myself anyway. As for trying the different textures on the cloaks and over various areas of the miniature, I think that's come out okay. As I say, the highlight on the cloak is probably my weakest point. But I do always like to look at the part that I need to work on more. Uh, it's uh, helpful for progressing. Overall, I'm actually just very pleased with the miniature. I think it's coming out really cool. I'll try this style again on something else. Okay, that's this miniature done. On to the next one. Subscribe if you want to see that. Hope you liked the video. If you did, then leave a thumbs up and all those other juicy things that YouTubers ask you to do all the time. But until next time, that is it. Bye!